This is part 4 for the Newman Projection mini-series. Be sure to stick around till the end of this video, where I tell you how you can join me for a weekly live organic chemistry review session. For the final example, we'll draw the Newman Projection for 3S, 4S, 4-chloro-2,3 dimethylhexane, looking down carbon 3 to carbon 4. I chose this molecule because at first glance it looks really tricky to figure out the Newman projection, but it's actually pretty easy if you follow the standard Newman projection rules. The first thing you want to do, especially if you're not given the structure, is draw it out and number your carbons so you can see where the projection will show up. For this molecule, since I'm looking down carbon 3 and carbon 4, the first thing I want to do is fill in the atoms that are not shown. Since I have a methyl going up into the page, that means I'm missing a hydrogen coming out of the page. Since on carbon 4 I have a chlorine down but out of the page, I will draw a hydrogen going into the page. Now the trick to drawing a Newman projection from this type of molecule is to rewrite the molecule showing just the two carbons for your projection and show the rest of the atoms and groups as substituents the same way that they'll show up on your projection. So I'll start by drawing the atoms for carbon 3 and carbon 4 and put their substituents as I see them. This gives me a methyl up right and a hydrogen up left for carbon 3 on the bottom, I have a carbon with two other carbons attached to it, but this entire group is simply isopropyl. So I will shortcut this by writing ISP. For carbon 4, I have a chlorine down to the left and a hydrogen down to the right. And then I have a two carbon chain, which I will simplify by writing ET for ethyl going up. In doing so, I took this ridiculously large and complex molecule and represented it in a very simple way that will allow me to draw my Newman projection. Since we're looking down carbon 3 to carbon 4, I will start with carbon 3 in the center and draw the ring around it that represents the bond between carbon 3 and carbon 4. Now imagine that you're taking the molecule and rotating it so that the forward carbon moves slightly to the right but out of the page. This will bring the isopropyl directly down in the front and put the methyl up to the right and hydrogen up to the left. Do the same thing for the rear carbon, but putting it into the page. This puts ethyl directly in the back in the up position. This brings the chlorine down to the left and the hydrogen down to the right. And there you have it. The Newman projection of what started out as a potentially very complex molecule. The next thing you'll want to do is analyze the conformations and the different energies of this molecule. I randomly started out here in the staggered conformation given how the molecule was drawn. And this is staggered because I have the groups in the front alternating with groups in the back. The other conformation is eclipsed where I would have something like the ethyl directly behind the methyl, the hydrogen directly behind the isopropyl, and so on. Your professor may ask you to analyze the different conformers or conformational isomers to show which is most stable and which is least stable. And you would do this by holding one carbon steady, for example the front carbon, and rotating the second carbon 60 degrees at a time. I won't go through every conformation here, but if you want to learn how to do these, check out my first two Newman projection videos where I explain it in detail. Instead, I will jump directly to two important conformations. The way I see the molecule, isopropyl is not only the largest group here, but it's actually the largest on the front carbon, and ethyl is a large group, which is the largest on the rear carbon. The way this projection showed up, given that my two largest groups are directly apart from each other, or 180 degrees away from each other, this is my most stable staggered conformation and my most stable conformation overall. The only serious interactions that I have here is a gauche interaction showing that isopropyl is near chlorine and another gauche interaction for ethyl which is near the methyl group. 
From this conformation, I will rotate 180 degrees in order to put the two largest groups directly behind each other for the worst conformation that I can get for this molecule. I'll start out by drawing the ring and keeping the front carbon as it is. When I rotate the rear carbon 180 degrees, the ethyl comes around to sit directly behind the isopropyl group. The chlorine moves 180 to sit behind methyl, and the hydrogen turns 180 to sit directly behind the other hydrogen. I have my two large groups directly behind each other, and this makes them very unhappy because they end up slightly pushing each other away. Just imagine as if you're talking to someone and that person is just standing too close. That makes you uncomfortable and likely to step back or push the other person away. That's what's happening in the molecule or in this conformation. I also have my two other large groups directly behind each other, which adds to the instability of this conformation. I recommend that you take this molecule and practice rotating it 60 degrees at a time so that you have your different staggered and different eclipse conformations. Analyze how the groups interact with each other and see what is more stable and what is less stable. To start you off quickly, this one is a staggered conformation and the most stable given that it's anti, meaning the two largest groups are 180 degrees or away from each other. And on the right I have an eclipse conformation, which is the worst conformation, given that the two largest groups directly eclipse each other. Do you have any additional organic chemistry questions? Then how about joining my weekly organic chemistry review sessions, live, online, and from the comfort of your home. For more information, visit layafirstside.com forward slash organic chemistry.